Is the ZEV mandate unfair? Is it unreasonable? Are we putting too much pressure on manufacturers when the market isn't ready? Let's talk through the situation this week. A couple of weeks ago, the Harry's Garage YouTube channel released a video entitled Why EV Uptake in UK is Stalling and the Government Must Abandon Its ZEV Mandate. I felt that Harry's video warranted a response. In case you haven't seen it, I'll link to his video from the end screen of this one, and I'll also put a link in the description. If you haven't already watched it, then you might want to consider doing so. It's quite a thought-provoking piece. As the title suggests, Harry's video actually covers a couple of separate but related subjects, including the state of the market and what that might mean for the success of the UK's ZEV mandate. I did a video on the ZEV mandate in October last year, and I'll link to that too for more context on what that mandate is and how it works. But to summarise, this is a requirement upon manufacturers that a certain percentage of their new car sales be zero emission. This applies from 2024, when a minimum of 22% of their new car sales must be zero emission. The target increases each year up to 80% in 2030. As it probably sounds, those targets are pretty aggressive. There are additional requirements in the mandate including a slightly lower set of targets for the sales of zero emission vans, as well as a cap on the CO2 emissions from the non-ZEV portion of the fleet, primarily to avoid those getting worse. Okay, so in Harry's video, he starts talking about EV sales having stalled. I commend him on that language, because that's a fair term, I think. There are some outlets saying that EV sales have slumped, and I'm not sure that's fair but Harry doesn't use that word, which I like. He goes on to point out that the figures in the mandate do not include hybrids, which is true, of course, as they have emissions. He says that it is this exclusion of hybrids, which he says to be a growth area, that is to blame for us being unable to hit the mandate targets. All right, that's interesting. Let's have a look at the data on sales, as this might tell us something important. What I've done is plot the sales data for the last five and a half years from January 2019 to the end of July 2024. Five and a half years might sound a bit odd, so let me briefly explain why I've done that. Since 2020 was the pandemic, the data and that year is a bit abnormal, and you could say that everything since has been influenced by it, at least to some extent. So I wanted a bit of a view of sales before that in this review. What I have is a series of graphs of sales split by all of the fuel types that the SMMT reports on separately. The SMMT is the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, the organisation which compiles the data and makes it available to us. This is a plot of sales for each fuel type as a percentage of the total sales for that month. In other words, I have normalised it to account for the huge variation in sales across the year. As you can see, it's a bit tricky to read altogether. So let's split it up into sections so that we can consider each separately. Firstly, here is the traditional ice car sales. This category includes mild hybrids, that is hybrids which cannot run on electric power alone. The first thing of note is the dramatic decline in diesel sales. They have dropped from about 29% of the market at the start of 2019 to just 6% now. That's getting on for an 80% reduction in the number of sales across this period. So it looks very much like diesel is on its way out. The top line shows petrol cars, and we can see a steady decline here as well. This is a drop from 64% to 52% of the market over this time. That's not anywhere near as dramatic as the decline in diesel sales, but change is clearly underway. Now let's look at the new energy vehicles as they're known in China. This is battery electric, full hybrid and plug-in hybrid cars. If we look top right, we can see the stalling growth of battery electric car sales. The data is noisy, but the trend looks largely flat, doesn't it? To be clear, it's not that sales are declining, as some people try to make out. 
it's simply that the growth in this category has paused. Bear in mind that interest rates are up at the moment and that BEVs are more expensive than other variants, which probably has some bearing on that. The next line down is full hybrids. That's the blue line for those who can see the colours. Here we can see a slow growth in the past couple of years. It's not all that dramatic, but it looks like it has continued trending upwards. Market penetration for full hybrids goes from about 11% to 14% in the last two years. Then the third line, the red line, the lowest on the right, is for plug-in hybrids. Reading this is a little bit trickier. Sales of plug-in hybrids passed 9% in November 2021, but fell back to more like 7% for a while, before rallying and reaching 9% again this year. So I wouldn't call that growth really, it's more like a recovery. Harry talks about growth in hybrids, and I do think that's fair. Full hybrids have continued to grow a bit, but plug-in hybrids haven't really grown, rather they have recovered again after a sales drought. However, there isn't much by way of growth here at all, and certainly I'd question whether changing the five-year sales strategy based on this growth is wise. It feels like we need to see more significant trends than this before changes in legislation would become necessary. Let's go back to the graph though. There's something interesting here. Those big spikes in the BEV line, that top orange line, what's going on there? I think we should ignore the leftmost spike. That spike is in April 2020, when almost no cars of any form were sold in the UK because of the lockdown. When there is little data, we need to be careful. I think this is probably just an anomaly, a bit of noise in a very small signal for that one month. But what the other spikes seem to show is that people rushed to buy BEVs in December each year, at least in 2020, 21 and 22. There isn't an obvious spike in December 23. I wonder what causes those spikes? It made me question if there was a big incentive programme in December each year. I'm not aware of any government sales incentive that might cause these spikes. And if it's a manufacturer incentive, then I'd say the only one big enough to do that on their own is Tesla. But the swing seems too big for any single manufacturer to achieve to me. There is often a doubling of market share between November and December. But I do have a hypothesis. Could it be regulation? Even before the ZEV mandate came into force, there were requirements for manufacturers to hit specific maximum CO2 emissions targets, the Euro 6 emissions targets. Was this big uptick in sales at the end of each year being caused by manufacturers selling additional BEVs to achieve their overall fleet emissions targets? If it was, then that would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Firstly, it would be an indication that having targets makes a difference. That would be useful validation of the idea of using targets to drive behaviour. Secondly, and perhaps more interestingly, it would mean that dealers can influence sales when they want to. If this is true, then it would rather undermine the premise of Harry's video, wouldn't it? His video is based on the belief that manufacturers won't achieve their targets, and so the targets should be scrapped entirely. But if this data shows that dealers can influence the public's buying decisions, significantly increasing the market share of BEVs three years in a row, then maybe that suggests manufacturers might be capable of hitting the ZEV targets after all. I think these spikes also offer other insights. Firstly, they are a reminder of how sales in some months can vary dramatically from the norm due to external influences. Furthermore, we should be mindful that sales throughout the year are far from steady. This graph of the total sales volume across all fuel types shows that there are two big spikes in total sales in the UK each year. This is driven by the registration plate changes that happen in March and September. Indeed, about 30 to 35% of the year's total sales happen in those two months. Since we won't have the details of the September sales until the start of October, it seems a bit early to be saying that we won't be anywhere near the ZEV target. I'd say it's all still to play for, and I for one will be watching the September sales figures closely. 
So Harry's video is based on a premise that we're a long way from meeting the ZEV mandate targets, whereas I think there is still a chance. Indeed, I'm pretty sure there is still a chance, and that's because I've seen behind the curtain. I know how the new car sales business works. I used to work for a company who ran sales incentive programs. Our clients were some of the big car manufacturers. We would devise and then operate schemes intended to improve sales and then try to measure the results. The measurements we made reinforced what those in the sales industry already know, that salespeople can achieve a lot if they are properly incentivized. Individuals sell more if there is a material benefit to them doing so, and that's why any sales target exists. It is not uncommon to hear of people having a bad experience when trying to buy an EV. Some people have gone into a dealership to buy one, only to be talked out of it by the salesperson. That could be because the salesperson truly has the best intentions towards that client. But it could also be that the salesperson wants to sell something that achieves a sales target, or which is quicker to sell. Incentives make a difference, and manufacturers incentivize what they want to sell the most. At the moment, building and selling EVs profitably is hard. In a few years, we will reach price parity on new cars and everything will be much easier. Until then, there is limited benefit to a manufacturer in selling them or supporting the salespeople in doing so. What the ZEV mandate does is give manufacturers a difficult target, a stretch goal, if you will, and penalizes them if they fail to reach it. The benefit of that is that the manufacturers will incentivize the salespeople to sell BEVs and require that they are fully informed and able to do so. But the other point I want to make is that the ZEV mandate is more than just a single, simple target to beat manufacturers with. What's clever about the legislation is that there are options for manufacturers. They've been given flexibility in achieving their goals. You see, you can offset gains in one part of the scheme against another in order to avoid fines. As I said earlier, there are targets associated with both zero emission vehicles and also with non-ZEVs. The main goal of the non-ZEV element is to avoid the emissions from ICE engines getting worse, but it's not just that. If a manufacturer can do better than just maintain the status quo, if they can reduce emissions from their ICE cars and vans, then they can use credits from that aspect of the system to offset against their ZEV obligations. The target is for manufacturers to match their fleet's average emissions from 2021. But their fleets have changed since then. Have you noticed that the number of non-hybrid models available has dropped dramatically in the last couple of years? I think the ZEV mandate is why. I think manufacturers are going to use the flexibility within the scheme to avoid penalties. I think they will use this ability to offset their non-ZEV requirements against their ZEV sales, thereby lowering their targets a bit. After all, if they can reduce their fleet average emissions, then that helps them lower their ZEV target each year for all three of the years for which this form of offsetting is allowed, whereas any single ZEV sale only helps them in a single year. Next, there is an option of open market trading. A manufacturer who sells more than their required percentage allocation of ZEVs can sell their excess in credits to other manufacturers. That adds another level of flexibility to help everyone meet their obligations. Some groups have said they will definitely not be doing that. They will not be buying credits. That could be true, or it could be them showing their poker face. It could be that they want anyone selling credits to believe that there are no buyers, that the credits will not be particularly valuable. It could be a tactic to drive down the perceived value of them as a way to manage their cost of buying them. There is no fixed price for trading under the scheme. Instead, the market is open to natural forces. So surely the smart money would be on people buying, talking down the value of the asset. Sometimes in this world, not everything is as it seems. There's what you say, and then there's what you do. Companies have been known to say one thing only to do another. 
I think we should wait and see on that front. Finally, in the early years, a manufacturer can even borrow a little of their allocation from the next year. I'm not sure that will be a very attractive option as the targets ramp quite quickly, but it is another option to avoid fines early on. As a result of these details of the scheme, the fine print, manufacturers do not all have to achieve 22% ZEV sales this year. They can't be far off, but they have some flexibility. Solely looking for 22% market penetration is missing the more complex picture of the options allowed under this legislation. Perhaps declaring defeat before even the first year of the scheme has passed might be a little premature. I suggest we not worry too much at this stage. Manufacturers might not be as far off their targets as it might at first appear. There's more going on than any one single figure can tell us. If you watch that video of Harry's, you'll see that he makes other arguments as well, including asking why we can't have hybrids instead. Don't worry, I'll cover those too, but we'll discuss those another time. In summary, when considering if we should scrap the ZEV mandate, I'd say not. It exists as one step in a larger plan to achieve our legal obligations under the Paris Climate Accord. The UK has identified a plan to get us to the goals that have been set, and the ZEV mandate is what gets car manufacturers on board with achieving their part of that plan. Salespeople need to be encouraging buyers to try EVs and be supported in doing so, having the right information at hand to alleviate our fears about them. There's nothing quite like an incentive programme to drive the behaviour of a sales team. I should know because I used to play a small part in some of those programmes. Furthermore, there is still time for the change in sales that manufacturers need to achieve this year's target. And even if they don't achieve their sales targets, the ZEV mandate allows for trading between manufacturers and offsets between different parts of the scheme to resolve any shortfall. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments on this subject are most welcome. If you've liked the video, then it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And it would also help me achieve my stretch goal for the channel if you would subscribe as well. Thanks.